Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be introducing the basics surrounding making layer terrain using World Painter for use in Conquest Reforged. While this video aims to show the basics, I plan to do future videos showing you how to install World Edit, custom brushes for use in World Painter, and how to texture the layer terrain. So, without further ado, let's get right into this tutorial. Alright guys, so getting on with the tutorial, here we have World Painter. Uh, a link to the World Painter install will be down below so you can get the software installed on your computer. This is the main software we're going to be using and it's incredibly important if you want to make layered terrain with Conquest Reforged. So basically the plan of this section is to run you guys through how to make a very basic piece of layered terrain and kind of the, the process. Okay, so to begin with we want to make a new world. So you can name it whatever you want. I recommend using for map format Minecraft 1.15 or later. Uh, there are multiple versions here. Now obviously if you're using 1.12 Conquest Reforged use the 1.12 version. However if you're using 1.15.2 or now 1.16.5 versions you should use the Minecraft 1.15 or later version here. Uh, and obviously when Conquest gets updated beyond that you can go to the Minecraft 1.17 version although this is experimental and will not work for Conquest right now. Uh, next up we can choose our dimensions, so this scales in uh, kind of increments, so multiples of one, 128, so I'm going to do a 256 by 256 world here because I want it to be fairly small so that the rendering time is fairly quick. Um, I recommend starting with a flat world type just so you've got a basic canvas to work on, put your water level down to zero because or else you're going to have water popping up everywhere and while you can use the sponge tool to drain this it's just more convenient to have it gone. Uh, you can also set your starting level to whatever you want so I'm going to set mine to one just so that I have the whole um, height limit available for mountains or hills or whatever. And then we've got options here for lava instead of water and beaches. I uncheck both of these I mean it's a flat world you're not going to see it. Uh, surface material, bare grass, you can do advanced ones, however bare grass is fine. Um, extended block IDs, I am pretty sure you should enable that. Uh, I Again, I don't normally, but I'm pretty sure you can enable that. And then we can just create the world. So here we have a very blank uh, kind of canvas here. Um, you have a view up here for the 3D view, which... Oh, no, that's not it. Sorry, that's the uh, image overlay. If you go to view, show 3D view, you can see a 3D view of your map. So say if I go in here with one of my custom brushes and use the height tool and then just kind of build a mountain in the middle, which is going to be incredibly basic. And then we bring this up. You can now see this mountain on here and you can kind of rotate the view and see your terrain from different angles. Now this is obviously very basic. Installing brushes is something I might cover in a, another video or um, I might just link some a, a brush pack in the description down below. They're fairly easy to install. Um, I, again, I won't do it right now because I want to focus on showing you guys how to do the layer terrain. So once you've kind of got terrain built, um, however you do that, mainly using custom brushes I imagine, so I'm just going to kind of try and make it look a little bit more unique here check out that 3d view okay so we kind of have a very basic hill i kind of want to bring it down over here oh i just realized i can't because it's very low down again that's another point with your settings if you don't plan on going deeper then uh you know you can set it set your starting levels to fairly low however if you do it's important that you you know have a starting point higher up so that you can get this depth nine times out of ten i use world machine stuff so it tends to start quite high above the terrain anyway but that's something to consider depending on what you'd like so now that we have this kind of terrain built looking at this here we've got a very nice hill here it kind of is very basic you know very simple um you can see that we now have a, a nice peak here there's some bumps it's fairly bumpy now one thing to consider is with using layers your terrain needs to be fairly bumpy if you have large steps, i.e. it's flat for quite a large section of land, unless you use a smooth brush, and even then when you use the smooth brush, which is over here, the snow will kind of step up. So you'll have a very flat section, and then it will step up suddenly, and then it will be flat. So it's important that when you do this, that you have kind of bumps. So if you have a super flat piece of terrain, so for, so for example here, 
if we look down at this bottom left hand corner we have a very flat section here now with this snow layers it can only use i think about seven layers so it will spread them out to a certain degree but it won't actually spread out across the whole area that or it'll be completely flat so what you can do is you can add just kind of a step here and what this will allow is it will allow for the terrain and the layers to kind of form to that and they will raise slightly now this might interfere with your terrain so it's all about tweaking testing and doing small renders to kind of get it looking how you want but it's important that you look out for that um, i noticed that issue a lot when i was doing track of so i want to make sure you guys are aware of it as well Okay, so how do we actually get the layers? Now, this is really simple. Um, there are two methods. So either you can come to the Layers tab here and select the Frost layer. You then extend the size of your brush and cover the whole area and it makes it completely white. Now, this will mean that when we spawn in, the entire terrain will be covered in Frost layers. So that's one method of doing it. However, obviously, as you can see, the one downside, especially if you've been texturing and adding textures and block textures and whatever whatever you want to add to your terrain it makes the whole thing white which means you can't actually see where stuff is and it's kind of uh, obstructive the alternative is to when when you go into export so file export export as new minecraft map you have a lot of options here now if you go to other layers you have an option here that says frost everywhere now you want to make sure that smooth snow and frost under trees are selected this will basically mean that the frost is kind of smoothed out it's deep and will get the best look possible that you you might want so once this is checked you can go back over to general general settings now i recommend if you're doing a piece of terrain like this especially if it's small and it's not as large to do a void border with an endless border size now what this will mean is you will have just a void surrounding your terrain it's much better than having a procedurally generated Minecraft world generating around your custom terrain. Trust me, you don't want that. It looks really unprofessional and it looks quite rough. So make sure to go void, endless border size, mode creative, you can allow cheats, you know, all this stuff is fairly simple. You have two options down here for export. So you have export everything. So as it suggests, it will export all of your terrain or you can export selected tiles. Now, obviously I've only got kind of four tiles here, but if I highlight, say these three, it will export these three chunks, but it won't actually export this corner here. So that's really important if you want to kind of say export a, sele uh, a selection so you can test a specific area. So for example, if I want to test this bottom left area and see how flat that is, I can just highlight that and it'll export that. You can also move your spawn around. So if you kind of, um, yeah, go. so if you right click, you see the white cursor moving around, you can say move it down to here and then you can set spawn. And what that will mean is your spawn, which is marked in red with the red cross, is now moved to there. I'm gonna keep it in the middle though, just so I can fly around quite quickly. Okay, there we go. So now all you need to do is you need to make sure your directory is correct. So you can select your .minecraft profile or wherever you want it to get exported. So I'm here, gonna get exported to my Conquest Reforge 1.16.5 profile in my worlds folder. You can name it whatever you want. So I'm just gonna call this, um, tutorial layer test um, and yeah there you go so once you click export again this is going to be really quick so export everything export and done again very small terrain as you can see 65 uh, thousand blocks uh, or land area of 65 thousand blocks and yeah there's some cool little information there now it's worth noting that when you get to terrain when you build terrain that is roughly um, you know in the thousands in terms of dimensions then it will take a lot longer to render and also when you're re running replace commands in game to texture layers uh, it will might take a lot longer as well but that's something we're going to get into in a second in terms of doing a very quick block palette to apply to snow layers using replace commands with world edit okay so without further ado that's the end of this section and i'll see you guys in game with the actual world Okay guys, so we've loaded up Conquest Reforged at 1.16.5, we've exported the world, so it should hopefully appear in your single player folder. So here we have the world here, we're going to load up. And initially there are some commands you want to run just to make the process a lot easier and to stop some unfortunate things happening. Those being random tick speed and mob spawning. So obviously if you want mobs to spawn all over your world then you can do it however i highly recommend turning off random tick speed to zero just because it helps avoid a lot of you know annoying annoying issues okay so once you load in the first thing you need to do is slash game rule random tick speed and set that to zero 
So what that means is basically the game will not progress. So the uh, basic blocks won't update essentially. So for example, if you had crops, they wouldn't grow, for example, or you know, there, there are a few other examples. Another thing I recommend you do is slash game rule, do daylight cycle and set that to false. That means that the time will not change. And that's useful if you're running commands to replace uh, the snow layers. And if you don't want it to become dark, etc. Et so those are the two main commands um, that I recommend running. And as you can see here, we've got some really cool terrain. Um, it's very basic. Uh, however, if you know if you want more advanced terrain, you can use software such as World Machine and things like that, or implement height maps. And yeah, you can really play around with it and get some cool terrain. But we have some nice bumps here, and, and luckily we've kind of avoided that issue of having a kind of flat section. This was the area that was quite flat, and as you can see, because we added a kind of bump here, it's made a nice shape again like you can already see things you could do here you could have a small stream coming through or have a stream coming down i plan on doing a, a video later on or you know further down the line basically showing you how to do lots of things with layer terrain in terms of buildings that will be streams and fences and stuff um but yeah so without further ado let's get into texturing so the important thing to do here is to basically grab a wooden axe now this is the one tool from world edit i'm going to do a video on how to install world edit because it's very important for congress reforged um simply put all you need to do is add it to your mods folder with congress reforged and you should basically have it installed do slash slash wand and you will get yourself the one that you need to use so all you really need to do is select the area that you want to kind of change the blocks for so I'm going to do the whole terrain here. Then I recommend coming to the middle. And you can basically do, and I'm going to try and type this out uh, off offhand here. So you do slash slash replace snow space conquest uh, grass underscore block underscore layer. And then I'm pretty sure you do a, I forgot that, but you do the upwards triangle there. And then that should work hopefully <laughs> again commands are tricky oh there we go bit of lag but boom that's the snow so now we have a nice grass plane as opposed to a snowy wasteland uh, again if you want to replace the blocks underneath all you need to do is a similar command only it will be um for this case it's loamy dirt which is just minecraft dirt so you would do slash slash replace um dirt Get rid of that upwards triangle and then with the layers all you need to do is you need to do a square bracket layers eight and oh, not nine layers eight i keep pressing i keep pressing nine my bad <laughs> um and that should basically replace all the full blocks to a layers eight version of the grass block now the reason why this is important is you could use and replace it with um the uh, normal grass block which would just be two or minecraft colon grass underscore block or whatever however um this would basically mean that there would be lighting glitches with the layers so i'm going to try and oh i've undone way too much so if i just redo the grass layers a sec okay so if i now replace the dirt with just normal minecraft grass blocks you know, it looks pretty good. However, if you look at certain blocks, I'll try and find a good example. Okay, here. So if you notice here, it's, it's hard to see, but when you do large kind of flat fields, fairly large and flat fields or, or big areas, you'll notice it. There is a slight black shadow, and that's because there is a full block right next to a layered block. And the basically the full block casts that shadow. However, if you run a command to use the ape thick layer, which is essentially just eight grass block layers stacked on top of each other, that does not cast that shadow. I mean, obviously I have natural shadows because I'm using uh, shaders, but as you can see, there is now not a shadow, and that basically allows for your terrain to look a lot more kind of fluid and nice. Why is that not replaced up there? That's a mistake. Um, oh, that's an easy fix. So if you have things like that, you can just identify which block it is and do the same thing again, but just changing the block. So in this case, it's grass, and there we go, we're sorted. Anyways, I hope you all found this tutorial useful. As discussed earlier, I plan to do future videos showing you how to install World Edit, custom brushes for use in World Painter, and how to texture layer terrain that you make. 
make sure to subscribe, like and comment down below. I also have a Discord server which you should totally join. I'll see you in the next video, goodbye.